Hello, everyone, and welcome wherever you happen to be. Uh, I see we've got Argentina. Just feel free to add your country in the um, chat so we can see. And the weather is shining, really. Sun is shining. That's great. Poland. We've got Kiev. I learned how to say that. And Zainab is here from Iran. Wonderful. All right. And our presenter is coming to us from India. Dr. Ramesh Sharma and I have, I guess, gone back to 2007, 2008 on Wiki Educator, where we collaborated. Those were wonderful days pro before uh, COVID when we could communicate online uh, because we wanted to, not because we were forced to. And we shared lots of um, information. All right. Um, Dr. Sharma teaches instructional design at M. Dakar University in uh, New Delhi, India. Uh, before that, he taught educational technology and learning resources at Wa Wasan Open University in Malaysia. He's an expert in open and distance and technology mediated learning and has served as a visiting professor at Universidad do Estado da uh, in Salvador and Bahi, Brazil. And he was a visiting professor at University of Fiji. Uh, the Commonwealth of Learning as director of the Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia, New Delhi, regional director of Indira Gandhi National Open University, India, and director of distance education at the University of Guyana, where they actually speak English in South America. He's the editor of the Asian Journal of Distance Education. And this is not written in his bio, but he's a passionate learner. Uh, he loves to share. He's very open and generous with uh, his knowledge, and I think that's a wonderful trait. So thank you for being here and for presenting once again at MMVC. I think you've been doing this uh, for a number of years, and it's uh, wonderful for all of us because we get to learn from you, and there's so much to learn. So it gives me great pleasure to give you the floor. Uh, Dr. Ramesh Sharma. And thank you everyone for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you so much. It is always a pleasure to be working with you. And uh, hello, my friends. Welcome. I can see. Hello, Dr. Doris. How are you? Okay, so let me begin by sharing my screen. Okay, do you want to continue? Yes. And here I am. Okay, now you can see. Okay, the uh, I wanted to work on this authentic learning experiences, and then later on I decided that uh, let me add some element of game based learning to this topic uh, because. Uh, we are working on some virtual reality applications. In fact, uh, just, uh, oh, I could have included that photo in my presentation. One of my good friend, Dr. Yashpal Sharma, with whom we are working on virtual reality, they have got a good grant and acquired some around 20 HMD, head mounted devices for virtual reality applications uh, to set up a lab uh, for that. So it means it is rising. And uh, there are many other uh, you know, factors we will uh, study them. So that's why I thought of uh, uh, sharing some of the, or discussing some points, uh, how to promote uh, learning through game-based and uh, leading to the authentic learning experiences. The, there are certain key points here and one of them is that the COVID-19, it accelerated the adoption of uh, online learning. And this will be one of the factors which will increase the growth of this game-based learning market. There are already means uh, uh, in the education sector, uh, various 
uh, government initiatives are being undertaken to improve the quality of education across the world. Policies are being introduced to modernize the sector with private uh, player participation and investment. Uh, in India, uh, the government has introduced the national education policy and in which uh, the policy has also recommended that uh, we should be done away with rote learning and rather focus on authentic learning experiences there. And uh, if you see like uh, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in its vision 2030, the government aims to increase the share of private education by allowing foreign business ownership there. And uh, uh, you know to, to attract other uh, global education providers uh, for that. And the rapid technological innovations, they have also increased the popularity of uh, uh, some other uh, uh, techniques like uh, uh, Dr. Eva so wonderfully presented uh, the uh, session just before mine on Moodle. And uh, you will be happy that uh, here uh, in our university, we have also configured, we have been using Moodle for a very long time. In fact, uh, I'm very fortunate to have uh, shared uh, my uh, dais uh, with uh, uh, Martin. Uh, we have been keynote speakers in Brazil a uh, few years ago. Uh, I think that photo on my Facebook is uh, of, uh, of that background, <laughs> which is there, in which me and Martin, we were both uh, uh, keynote uh, speakers on that. And it has, uh, you know, uh, so like uh, gamification in Moodle, it's a, a very interesting thing to adopt. Learning analytics in education industry allows to offer a personalized form of learning. And then the applications of AI, which fuels the adoption of digital education systems. These things, they help in customizing content, which can be based on student profile, performance, and active behavior. Therefore, the institutions, they are uh, seriously investing in virtual real uh, learning models, and which in turn will uh, you know, foster the growth in the game-based uh, 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 learning experiences. And the growing job opportunities in various fields like science, technology, engineering, mathematics, they have increased the popularity of STEM-based education. And therefore the parents, the teachers, the students, they are also pre uh, placing a greater emphasis on basic STEM-based education in the institutions across the globe. There, yeah. and the students, uh, 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 they, they, they are offered with uh, you know, various career opportunities with them. And these sudden emergence of uh, pandemic uh, where the schools and institutions, they were shifted to forced in a way uh, to go to uh, on online learning platforms, but it, it boosted the demand for online education as well. And these platforms, they create virtual classrooms so that the teachers, they can manage large audience without uh, you know, you know, certain other uh, technological means, they, like financial constraints. And the students also, they get to have uh, more than, you know, uh, uh, other kind of interactivities uh, with, the, uh, with their teachers. So uh, with this background, uh, this is very important. This game-based learning, it has been with us for quite a long time. Uh, and in fact, the initial experiments uh, like PLATO, which stands for Programmed Logic for Automated Teaching Operations, way back uh, uh, at the University of Illinois in 1960s, etc. They were there. The experiments they have been uh, conducted. And it was made more popular, famous uh, by Mark Prensky. And you know, he's very famous for giving those uh, terms to us of uh, uh, Generation Z and uh, the digital natives and <laughs> that kind of classification. So I mean, what is happening is that, uh, and when we say that the uh, 21st century learning revolution, uh, it will you know, finally be taking away the, the, the challenges of the uh, formal kind of system in which uh, the uh, means introducing the element of uh, fun. So the, the Teaching learning will become the truly learner center and fun based. So there will be, you know, we call it as joyful learning. 
So the fun for students, fun for trainers, fun for teachers, fun for parents, supervisors, administrators, uh, you know, executives, etc. And it is, it, is, it is something like the, the kind of developments which are happening. Uh, you remember that uh, the, the case of like uh, the uh, uh, Berlin Wall in the political world, uh, and uh, they uh, finally uh, those kind of uh, challenges in education, they will also uh, fall down. And the reason this will happen and uh, happen soon is that the learners, they are demanding to the point that the management, the teachers, the administrators, they cannot no, no longer resist. I think in the previous session, we were discussing about uh, um, what was the session of uh, Rob in which uh, we were discussing about diversity and inclusivity. And then I think one mention came of uh, learning from YouTube and there are some means those kind of opportunities available with us. So uh, the, the workers of this uh, games generation, they will, I mean, they do not uh, accept or attend that kind of training, which is boring. So we will have to, as a business, as a school, uh, as an industry, or even as min, uh, military, we have to uh, begin to I mean, uh, inject games into training and focusing more on that. And the good news is that uh, when we do it, we will find uh, that many of these uh, the processes, they not only make the learning and training much more enjoyable and compelling, but they are quite effective as well. This and to that extent that if you see the uh, the market uh, means uh, just uh, you will see that uh, very uh, uh, shortly after say I uh, uh, mean not uh, around within next five years it will reach up to uh, fifty billion dollars with a quite you know progressive uh, of a uh, CAGR of around uh, fifteen percent and. Uh, there are these, uh, uh, you know, there are uh, so many uh, things uh, that uh, uh, the technology is uh, uh, getting advanced, internet, and in, in fact, even in India, the 5G, uh, you know, those uh, spectrum auction, it has happened and things are getting in place. So the internet coverage is increasing, the power is increasing, the hardware is getting uh, more powerful. But, and these things, they are contributing to all kind of these uh, factors. So, and then the another kind of uh, uh, trends which are happening around it are like the emergence of immersive technologies, for example, augmented reality or virtual reality, which have positively impacted the education industry by enhancing learning efficiency and improving the engagement and knowledge retention levels in the students. Okay. And the market players such as like uh, Game Learn or Heurix Digital, they are integrating innovative technologies in their game-based learning modules, which aid the learner in better understanding and uh, uh, you know, getting in insights with the subjects with interactive experiences. And particularly, I can mention the uh, experiment by the National Council for Educational Research and Training in India where they have created the uh, augmented reality based uh, textbooks for school students. So you have your uh, book with you and uh, using your uh, I mean, that app, if you scan the uh, that image, you can see it in 3D. It will come like on uh, your, your device from there. So those, those things they are, and these technologies, they are integrated into the course that include real world based storylines, evaluations, allowing learners to effectively understand different topics with high retention mm -hmm. value. And if we see the case of, say, like, for example, if I talk about India, the demand for game-based learning from the corporate uh, sector, it is tend to uh, means, uh, uh, gain around 25% uh, 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 in, the, in the coming next uh, uh, five, six years. Uh, and it will be augmented by its uses for the interactive employee learning and development courses, corporate sector is incorporating modern learning technologies to help their employees understand their job roles through problem solving, strategic games, uh, the uh, small and medium enterprises and large enterprises, they are migrating to digital training platforms from their existing traditional uh, training methodologies. 
uh, which were held through either conferences or through workshops or, or something uh, like that. So uh, this is a quite interesting paper uh, by Stiller and Shaw uh, on, and they proposed a framework for categorizing games. The games can be like the digital games, non-digital games, on the basis of the purpose of the game or the genre of game based on the subject discipline or even the platform or delivery uh, uh, according to what that can be uh, offered from there. So this is interesting video. Uh, I need to check whether I share the sound or not. Just let me see. And go record. Nelly, uh, did you hear the voice in the video? Share some. It is Perhaps now you can listen to. <laughs> See this uh, the learning through uh, some sort of gaming, and the research has also shown us that the games they are competitive interactions bound by rules, and the purpose is to achieve specified goal that depend on the skill, and sometimes it involves chance, and it often occurs in some sort of imagery uh, setting, and uh, you know as a layman when we talk about games we usually treat it as playing playing games in, the, in that sense. But games when used in education are however much bigger than simply playing. The fundamental motivation for all game, game playing is to learn. And when we create games which are largely accessible, reasonable, priced, engaging, joyful, entertaining, and effective substitutes for traditional classroom activities in educational settings of all levels, it turns into fun and engagement and leads to the fusion of learning and interactive environment. So that is uh, the, the uh, advantage of that. So there, and uh, uh, we know our colleagues as a, a peer. Uh, this is uh, a... Uh, 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 And uh, so these games, they have features which are useful to learning and teaching. For example, 
the uh, the element of challenge curiosity control fantasy conflict we will see, we will see them uh, 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 in the next slide uh, contravariance uh, rules sensory stimuli mystery uh, variable quantifiable outcomes player effort and uh, you know attachment of the players to the outcome and negotiable consequences so the games they provide a uh, sort of interactive environment to us so that we can interact with the content as compared to books audios or even for that matter video and therefore interaction is more important feature in game based learning and beside interaction uncertainty is also considered as one of the effective features in game based learning uh so uh, uh, therefore uh, the some of the features which are quite important when we plan to design authentic learning experiences are the uh, the factor of adaptation like how can we adapt to the changing condition uh, when the things in the new things you take this simple example of covid nobody was ready in fact i used to joke about it in the year 20 Twenty, just two years ago, uh, you know, when you conduct some interview, I don't know if you have uh, appeared for some interview, and the person, the interview board, asked you this question. But there is a one question which is, I don't know why it is very much popular among the people. Those ask that question that where do you see yourself in the next five years? You know, so I used to joke that if anybody asked that question in two thousand fifteen. that where do you see yourself after 5 years i can guarantee that nobody said that i see myself sitting at home and working from there so things things changed but this covid pandemic it allowed us to adapt to the new situation so emergency remote teaching then other kind of uh, uh, methodological strategies measures they were adopted uh, its role in assessment and particularly like you see the student uh, is playing uh, uh, kahoot that so as an assessment the the uh, application which i just showed you in the previous video was uh, quizzes quizzes is also another interesting application where the learning can be used as an uh, the, the application can be used as an assessment of learning from there then we need to provide challenge if there are no challenges then definitely uh the the players they may lose their uh, interest from there and the challenge it should also support the kind of uh, you know conflict how it uh, um, you know takes care of those kind of uh, settings when one wants to say that i want to do this another player wants to say that oh, okay i want to focus more on that thing so you know conflicting interest and how those can be Uh, taken care of the, the situation, and then the the the, the control over over the scenarios, over the outcomes. How we can uh, make then fantasy, imagination. How we can boost it so that the creative, the aspect of creativity uh, uh, into there. The, the the element of interaction, interaction with the situation, interaction with the content. In, uh, uh, interaction with the environment the ecosystem something from there the language communication it's very important how clearly are we communicating our ideas the outcomes what is to be achieved from there that is quite uh, interesting then the locations there are the location based learning is very popular pedagogy and uh, there and then similarly you may be knowing about uh, there are various location games games and that uh, the pokemon go and those uh, alpha go and other things you know in the the people they were having their mobile phone and searching the locality around all those things so those things and they have a good a high uh, pedagogical value and then the element of mystery to keep the player the user the students on the toe that what is coming next that that short of uh, a mystery the rules the goals making them clear rule based learning that what can be and what can not be uh, or from there that can go uh, uh, with that uh, in there and then to promoting a short of some sort of sensory stimuli but uh, it can be 
whether it is visual or auditory or haptic in which we are something, whether it is for uh, smell or what, how the stimulus can be uh, you know, activated using these things of the So, <clears throat> yeah. and then the element of uncertainty. They are quite an important motivational uh, element in uh, game-based learning, which shows that when the element of gaming uncertainty were included, the student's affective response to the learning has been higher, regardless of age, which shows that the engagement with the learning is enhanced. And such uncertainty features, they could also transform the emotional experience of learning to improve the engagement from there. Then the representation feature also has a profound effect on this game-based learning. For example, the role-playing feature allows learners to have an authentic experience in solving a given problem in the gaming environment, which then can be transferred to the real world contexts. And it can stimulate a learner's motivation and curiosity during the cognitive process as demonstrated into the 3D gaming features, uh, uh, which we used to deliver the realistic experiences to the learners. I'm reminded of, uh, I think it is the Royal Guards of uh, 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 Canadian uh, Force, which uh, patrol the border area of uh, the US and uh, uh, Canada. There has been a research in which the, those uh, 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 border uh, patrol force, they were given training using virtual reality methods. Uh, I have that uh, research in my another presentation. But there, the subjects, the respondents, they confirm that uh, they are now in a better position to respond to the emerging situation when given the opportunity. So the training was a, as a role playing. And then RPG games, role playing games. Uh, I am the uh, visiting professor at uh, the State University of Bahia in uh, Brazil. Bahia is the second large, uh, I think, uh, uh, state in Brazil after Sao Paulo. Uh, so in Salvador, uh, and this is UNED there. So we also have created one and we have a patent in our name for that application on uh, role playing games uh, created a virtual museum uh, on, on that kind of application. So these things, they become quite important uh, uh, for oh, sorry, there. So here, uh, uh, you know, various means the uh, like uh, uh, the great uh, learning theorists like uh, uh, John Davy, uh, and to uh, Jerome uh, uh, Brunner. They have argued that the people learn from authentic experience and they build their knowledge based upon the past knowledge. So the current knowledge is based on the past knowledge. Therefore, if you remember the, uh, the, the initial slide of Prensky, I showed it to you. His argument about digital game-based learning has grabbed the attention of educators for suggesting that video games are not the enemy. I don't know those parents among us, how many times they have scolded the kids at home that every time you are busy in playing video games, video games, but believe you me, these video games, they are not the enemy uh, there but they are the good opportunity we have to engage our kids in real learning. And for engaging learners in real learning, game-based learning provides opportunity for relevant and attractive experiences. And these contexts are more than just motivational. They become a critical component of the learning environment. And games such as, uh, I'll show you some of the examples, like SimCity <coughs> games, they have been used to provide an authentic environment for learning geography. So they, 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 this, they can enhance the students' special abilities, general cognitive development. And in addition, the students who play the game reacted to the representation feature integrated into the game, which makes them feel real or authentic while they were in communication with other game players in the uh, virtual environment. So uh, that goes uh, uh, with them. 
uh, th 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 these are my friends, uh, Dr. Vinod Damlekar and Vidya Sujube and Professor Upendra Dhar, who is the Vice Chancellor at this uh, uh, university in India, in, 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 in the central part of uh, India. They developed a scale of player satisfaction based on many games and recommended four factors, which are most important. And they identified that the pleasant memories, excitement, team victory, and learning experience. So if we have to uh, design, develop a game, these four elements need to be given high priority from there. This is a published research uh, uh, from there. Then in game-based learning, knowledge or concepts, they are integrated into games from which the learners naturally acquire relevant concepts or knowledge. And a similar concept like serious games refer to games designed for more than entertainment. They are intended to help the students develop new skills, new knowledge, and such games touch on serious issues in education, medicine, military, uh, political affairs, corporate training, and, and like that. And uh, with the advancements in information technology, digital devices such as computers, uh, and particularly these our smartphones, they have become ubiquitous. Uh, and their integration into our everyday life has inspired the teachers and researchers in relevant fields to combine education and information technology in the form of digital game-based learning. In fact, uh, uh, just uh, uh, a few hours uh, you know, ago, today only, uh, we conducted one, uh, uh, it's, it's a kind of asynchronous workshop. Every Saturday we conduct it, we name it as Learning 321 which is learning in the uh, third decade of 21st century. And the presenter today uh, was from uh, uh, Turkey, very beautiful country. And she presented on the technology for the uh, special needs children the, as uh, assistive technology. And there one of the, uh, our members uh, reported that uh, to, uh, as a part of a hackathon activity, one of the, some of the students, they created an AI based application for those people who are hard of, uh, you know, speaking properly and those kind of things. So, the, you, know, you, you see the application of these such kind of things, they are uh, a, a better combination of educational objectives as well as information technology to be used as the uh, digital game-based learning for that. And then this is another uh, 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 good uh, uh, application. It is called as Stop Disasters. Here through simulation, it teaches the students about the potential risk of disasters, such as tsunami, hurricanes, wildfires, earthquakes, floods, and it uh, disseminates information and knowledge on disaster prevention, monitoring, and mitigation strategies. So it covers, and the, the advantage is that uh, it is by UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. It covers two aspects of sustainable development goals, the society and the environment. And the game is less comprehensive in this regard, so, uh, particularly the learning themes addresses only the SDG 9, which is related to industry, innovation, and infrastructure then SDG 11, which pertains to sustainable cities and communities, and then the sustainable development goal number 13, which pertains to the climate uh, action. This is another one uh, quite uh, uh, an interesting uh, application, inner cities. Here, the uh, students, they are instructed to deploy measures for energy conservation, carbon reduction, and fossil fuel reduction. And at the same time, they must determine how to generate more electricity to promote global economic development. So this game and those learners with an awareness of the necessary balance between economy, energy, and environment. So that goes uh, uh, with, with uh, very interestingly with that. And now, uh, as uh, Dr. Nelly, during my introduction, told that we have been working for a very long time and we have been holding uh, the uh, front at the monthly winner of Wiki Educator, 
We have done a lot of good work on open educational resources. So this is an interesting application I want to share with all of you. Uh, one of my good friend, uh, Dr. Lugna Ali uh, from Germany. Uh, she works with this learning technologies research group. Uh, they have developed this interesting game application as OER game. And let me share the link. I think this is the last slide. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll share. Let me first uh, uh, complete this. Now, there are what is happening about uh, the policy matters related to the game based learning. So, this is a research by Victoria State Government of Australia. And they have found that this game development involves students using game development. And they found that uh, the key target, like the curriculum areas, and there, uh, with the, the effective learning principles, it included, you know, the 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 uh, approach to the curriculum goals and the learning is uh, uh, means uh, very much uh, significant in there. Then this is the government policies on game based learning, the case of uh, England, and you can read it here that uh, uh, within the past decade there have been numerous and. Uh, the NESTA, the Future Lab, it has conducted a number of reviews, and they have found that uh, you know uh, uh, those kind of projects they have their impact in their own sense from there. And these are uh, some of the informations that uh, I, I put it in, in in context of my country that how the game-based learning is future in India because of the uh, the the kind of stress the education policies they have been and the kind of technologies which are available uh, uh, now the uh, uh, enhancement of uh, the uh, the net capabilities etc they have been uh, you know, uh, very powerful so we are uh, and so the indi the trends indicate that uh, uh, this is you know effectively uh, growing very very fast from there so this is uh, there. Let me. Uh, I need to stop my screen and then reshare it again. So just give me one minute. Sorry. Okay, where is the? So let's see. So we can go to Zoom meeting. Where is the chat? So here is the link. Uh, kindly, you have to register first yourself, and then uh, uh, you know you can uh, play this game. This is about your understanding of open educational resources. This is an interesting game. Let me uh, show it to you. So I'm sharing my screen again, and here you see if you want to listen to the music. This is background music. It is there. And so here you click on play, and then there are certain. I hope you can see it clearly. This is to create OER, the first one. I think it is a little more white uh, uh, color dominating. And then second is to use OER, third is for edit OER, and fourth is to distribute OER. You know, those five hours, four hours based on that, this game. So let us see, uh, create OER, and you can choose the level. So you choose level one. Okay, my dear friend, to strengthen the relationship, uh, okay. I think my screen is, <laughs> uh, I hope, so the queen of, uh, how do I change the color? It is difficult for me to read it in this way. Anyway, so here, this is the brief background, the storyline which goes. And after that, uh, okay, let me go to the next page. So here, this is the first activity. Drag to arrange the OER types on the right to match the right creating tool on the left. So here, uh, this is audio, this is text, and this is graphics. So this is Google Documents. Google Documents is say like uh, uh, for text, SoundCloud for audio. Okay, so it will go here. And the 
in this one in google documents i will go here and graphics so you click on submit yeah congratulations i passed first level then go to next level and here it is presentation website and video so word press wordpress is for making say like a website okay and then uh, filmora is for video and presentation is for google documents these are you know giving the uh, knowledge about how to create oers okay well done next level like this way so this is very quite an interesting and now you see another screen has come up uh, here in order to create the weapon you desire first you need to extract the raw material and it is very important to use the tool that fits with the material so now the question is which of the following tools should you use if you want to extract some iron you, know, you have been given the iron ore or or the or the soil and from there you have to extract the iron ore from there so similarly if you have to extract the text type what you will use okay so this is a broom and a shovel uh, what is this and a spoon okay <laughs> i need to lower down the uh, light on my screen so that I, it is it is too much the light can read the writing but anyway you have the link so maybe you can uh, you know try this game uh, it's very interesting particularly to to understand about open educational resources so it, it's quite you see uh, it it gives you the time 77 79 seconds i have been working and then the total score so far is 360 and if you want to quit you can log out from there or you can go to the main menu and uh, over uh, like that so you need to this is oer cycle you need to sign up register first uh, if you have not and uh, then you will be able to work with them so okay thank you so much where it gives me idea for my app okay very good that's great i love playing games i think everybody loves to play right at every age i allowed everyone you can just unmute yourself and voice your comments or ask your questions that's what i forgot to mention about you dr ramish and that is the fact that you enjoy learning new things i'll never forget with wiki educator yes. how you wanted to learn i mean yeah. you want to learn and i think that presenting not only for you but for others presenting is a great way to learn teaching mm -hmm. is a great way to learn because when yes. we present we need to learn the content and then uh, present it in such a way that others can understand it and that's how we learn which is why mmvc 22 and next year mmvc 23 is for everyone yes yes to share information and by the way everything is open you can now add your name i'll add the link at the end of next tomorrow so you can grab your spot your favorite spot and i hope you'll present next year so let me see uh, why do you uh, there's a question there why do you say it'll be the future of education in india maybe i've missed some information oh, no actually uh, that was uh, i just to represent the case for my country to to show it to that how we are working in that. india uh, is there by I, the way india i think is uh, one of the world's leading uh, technology uh, countries i think in the world i don't know if there's a yeah. specific area like in california uh is there an area where silicon, they silicon valley yeah no but in india is there a silicon oh, valley uh, yeah. in, in india we this is a bangalore um uh, can cities. you write that in the chat because i'm sorry i don't think i i got uh, it i want to make sure that um uh, B-A-N-G-A-L-U-R-U. -E the new name is Bengaluru, which is the local name. 
No, I don't, really, these... I don't think I've been there. Where is it? <laughs> yes, yeah. In fact, you you were in. Uh, I was Uruguay, in. Uruguay. I was in a place called. I was in New Delhi, somewhere outside of yeah, New Delhi. It is. It is uh, now we call it as Guru Gram, but the, ah, but it's the was, same place. Same place. So I was yes. there. Okay, yes. and that's where I that. met you for the face to face, right? Yes, a lot of IT companies and uh, the IT tech something. It's completely. So in India, we have some cities which have been established as IT cities. So all those major Microsoft, Google, you name Oracle, anything, be it small company, be it a giant like Google, everything is there. And there is a reason for that. Uh, one of them is that uh, the Indian programmers or Indian students, you can say that uh, the English speaking skills are good. Uh, the science and mathematics skills are better. Uh, they are also good. And, uh, you know, in computer science, uh, they are the main factors. It means if your mathematics is good, you can do very well in uh, computer science. Uh, it's not that if you don't know mathematics, you won't be able to do it, but it helps from there. So um, that goes. So it's, uh, in software, we feel proud that, uh, and, you know, the CEOs of uh, uh, all the important uh, <laughs> technology companies or tech companies uh, they are indian so uh, that's right that <laughs> yeah they're from india that's right uh so yeah in uh people from india have um an impact on the world but they've always had so this isn't new but now with technology i guess it is so I shared the link for my presentation. Yes, I added it. I already added it. It's on the Google Doc. You can see yes. it there because you couldn't do it. Sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I actually I sent the access request, but I I saw that you were doing it, so I kept quiet. You saw I, it. I, I could see your icon when I was. You could see, but you didn't see my eyes, right? <laughs> my eye. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank, thank you, you, thank you so much for this. Thank you. Um, it's always a pleasure. And I think there's a question mark there. I'm sure ed tech companies are ready to promote their products. I'm just wondering pedagogically, uh, will gamification, game based learning be applied widely? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the, it is being promoted because, you know, there are certain market uh, forces also, and particularly when nowadays everybody is talking about metaverse, so the virtual reality applications, uh, which is a place a platform for that, and then the emergence and acceptance of blockchain uh, with that, so this is gaining wider. In fact, many of the games they are now being based on blockchain platform. So this is uh, coming up very fast, and uh, the products are being designed with that. Uh, in mind and particularly it is very helpful in uh, because it's integration, it's operation, it's uh, management in online settings is easier uh, uh, as compared to traditional face-to-face -face classroom based learning. So um, uh, yeah, uh, I can say that yes, they are promoting their product and both kind proprietary as well as the free open source and with open access games they are also being uh, shared created uh, uh, all right so thank you very much we're going to get ready for the next session dr sharma i hope you join uh, we're also going to be we're going to stay in india for a while yes so uh no need to travel 